NXL A-Level Maths, Pure Paper 1, October 2020, Question 11. Circle C1 has equation x squared plus y squared equals 100. Circle C2 has equation x minus 15 all squared plus y squared equals 40. The circles meet at points A and B as shown in figure 3. For part A, we need to show that angle AOB equals 0.635 radians to three significant figures where O is the origin. So we've got our equations, x squared plus y squared equals 100, and x minus 15 all squared plus y squared equals 40. If we put these together, solve as simultaneous equations, we can find the x coordinates at A and B, and then we can go from there. So using our equation for circle one, if x squared plus y squared equals 100, y squared must equal 100 minus x squared. We can then substitute that into our equation to C2. So x minus 15 all squared plus 100 minus x squared equals 40. Expanding the bracket gives us x squared minus 30x plus 225 plus 100 minus x squared equals 40. Well, the x squareds are going to cancel. And bringing the 225 and the 100 together we get minus 30x plus 325 equals 40. So 30x equals 285, x equals 9.5. So now if we consider the triangle O, A, and then the point on the x-axis where A and B crosses, we can see that we've got a hypotenuse of 10 because the equation for C1 is equal to 100. So the radius must be the square root of this. We've just worked out that x 9.5, so that's the distance between O and the line AB. Using this, we can find the angle alpha. So cos alpha equals 9.5 over 10. So alpha equals 0.31756. AOB must be double this, which gives us an angle of 0.635 as required. The region shown shaded in figure three is bounded by C1 and C2. Find the perimeter of the shaded region, giving your answer to one decimal place. So we can see with this region that if we put these red lines in here, which go from the centers of C1 and C2 up to A and to B, the perimeter of the shape is actually created by the major sectors of C1 and C2 which is going to have angles of 2 pi minus the AOB that we just found in part A for C1 and that other angle at the centre for C2, which we'll look at later. So looking at C1, if we just want to find the perimeter that is on C1, we're going to use our formula for the length of a sector, which is 2 pi minus the angle at the centre times by the radius. So we've got 2 pi minus the angle we just worked out, 0.635, times by the radius of 10, gives us 56.482. So this is the distance around the outside of C1 from A to B anti-clockwise. We need to do the same thing for C2 now, but we don't know the angle at the middle yet, so we're going to do this in the same way that we've just done for C1. We know that this line here, the radius, must be root 40 due to the equation of C2 being of the form equals 40. The line from the center of C2 to the line AB, well that must be the 15, which gets us to the center of C2. Again, we've got that 15 from the equation because it's x minus 15 squared, hence it's center as x coordinate 15. And we know that the distance from O to the line AB is 9.5. We worked that out in the last part. So we've got that triangle there. We can work out beta, so cos beta must equal the 15 minus 9.5 of the adjacent side over the root 40 of the hypotenuse. So beta equals 0.51635. And again, the angle at the center must be double this, which is 1.0327. Using exactly the same thing as we did for C1, that means that the perimeter of our major sector for C2 is 2 pi minus the 1.0327 that we've just worked out, times by the radius of root 40, which gives us 33.207. Adding this to our 56 gives us an answer of 89.7 to one decimal place.
If you've enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe to the Doing Maths channel to keep up to date with all the latest releases.